My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm in my backyard in Moscow, Russia, and we built this fire because right now I'm going to begin talking to you about becoming a life ablaze. God wants you to be spiritually on fire. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, Paul said to Timothy and to us, stir up the gift of God that is in you. You've got to stir up the fire of God in your heart, and to stir it up, you've got to have fuel to put into the flame. Eventually, this fire will go out if we don't do something to feed it. We've got to keep adding fuel to keep it burning, and it's the same with your spiritual life. If you want to burn for God now and burn for years to come, then you've got to have the right fuels in your heart. And today, I'm going to talk to you about the fuels you need to remain ablaze for the Lord for years to come. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust. A message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. Thank you for joining me for today's program. I've been waiting for you because today we're going to start a brand new series. Don't miss one of these programs because in this series, we're going to see what kind of fuel you need inside you to stay on fire spiritually. Maybe you feel like your embers are at a low burn. Well, what do you need to do to stir them up so you once again become an inferno for the Lord? That's what this series is about. And every fuel that we're going to discuss in this series is essential if you're going to stay on fire for God. That's why right now I'm offering you my series, which is called A Life Ablaze. Don't you want to be a life ablaze? You can be. You just need to know what kind of fuel you need to add to your flame so it keeps burning and so you can sustain that fire for the rest of your life. It is just powerful. And it's 10 parts. It comes in multiple formats. Order your copy today. We're also offering you my brand new book. I'm so excited about this book. It's 448 pages. Somebody said to me, Rick, do you ever write small books? Well, it's kind of hard because just so much pours out of me. I really put a lot into my books. And this book is called A Life Ablaze, 10 Simple Keys to Living on Fire for God. God wants you to be a blazing inferno. And you can be. Maybe you were earlier in your life, but you feel you've lost something along the way. What do you need to do to stoke the coals, to get the fire burning again, that's what I discuss in this book, and I talk about 10 simple fuels you need to put inside you so that you keep burning and you can sustain that fire for years and years to come. Order your copy today. And I want to remind you that if you want to become a partner with our ministry, we always send a special package of books to people who become partners. This is our way of saying thank you for becoming a partner. And when you partner with us, you help us take the teaching of the Bible to people that are really hungry for the scripture. Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many. You may live in a city where it seems like there's a church located on every corner. The whole world does not like that. There are vast regions of the world where there is not even a church. People are longing for someone to bring them the Bible and the verse by verse teaching of the Bible. And when you partner with us, it's not about money. This is a kingdom relationship so that together, we can make an impact in people's lives who are crying for somebody to bring them the living water of God's Word. And I'm asking you to pray about becoming a partner. And if you are already a partner, I want to tell you, my dear friend, you are really making a difference in somebody's life. There's someone out there whose life is being transformed by the teaching of the Bible because you give right from your home. You are making a difference in someone else's life. And I want to say thank you for that. But today, I'm going to talk to you about how to stay ablaze for years and years to come. And you need your Bible. Today, we're going to be looking primarily at two verses. So reach for your Bible. I have my Bible and I have my study notes because today I have a lot that I want to share with you. But today, I'm going to talk to you about staying ablaze for years and years to come. So let me ask you, when you were first saved, and when you were first filled with the Holy Spirit, did you blaze with the power of God? I remember when I was first filled with the Holy Spirit, I was young, I was simple in my faith, and I was on fire for Jesus. I was a teenager in high school. 
And I actually stood on a ledge in the hallway in our high school and preached to the students as they walked up and down the aisles. I started a club in our high school called Alive in Christ. I got a teacher filled with the Holy Ghost. He began to speak in tongues and began to gather students around us. And God's fire literally was ablaze in our high school. You know, the scripture says that God makes his ministers a flame of fire. God wants me to be a flame of fire. God wants you to be a flame of fire. We need to start on fire and stay on fire as long as we live. But sometimes people begin to lose their fire through the years because they get busy or they become preoccupied with other things or they have disappointments in life. All kinds of things can affect a person's spiritual passion. Well, what do you do when your flames begin to be dampened? When it seems the fire in your heart is dissipating or beginning to wane, what do you do to stir the fire back up again? That's what I'm going to talk to you about in this series beginning today. And I want us to go to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, a verse that I just love where Paul is speaking to Timothy. And Timothy is going through a very rough time when Paul writes this verse. He's pastoring the church in Ephesus. The church of Ephesus, as the church in all the Roman Empire, was under a lot of pressure and persecution. Timothy had people who were defecting from the faith leaders who were defecting from their positions of leadership inside the church. Timothy was dealing with a lot of rejection and a lot of hurt. And all of these things were beginning to affect his spiritual fire. So Paul wrote to him in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6, and listen to these marvelous words of the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul. He said, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Paul said, stir up the gift of God that is in you. Wow, that is so powerful. The word stir up in Greek is the word anazupereo. It's a compound of three words. Listen very careful. The word ana means whatever you're doing, do it again. Do it again or repeat an earlier action. The word zao is the word which means to be alive or to be lively, to be thriving. And the third word in this compound is the word pur, which is the word fire. So it is the word ana, which means repeat the action, do whatever you were doing before, do it again. The word zao describes something lively, something really alive or enthusiastic. And the word pur, which is the word fire. Well, if you're just going to translate this word stir up simply, it means repeat whatever you have to do to put life back into your fire. That's really what it means. And it could be translated like this, to be enthusiastic. So whatever it's talking about, you have to do it enthusiastically. It could be translated to be fervent. He's talking about doing something very fervently. It means to be passionate or to be vigorous. So whatever Paul's talking about, you have to do it passionately and you have to do it very vigorously it's really going to be intentional if you're going to stir the fire up again. Or it means to do something wholeheartedly or zealously, and it can be translated to rekindle or to bring back to life again. Timothy's fire was going out probably because of all the issues he was dealing with. It was beginning to affect his spiritual passion. He felt like the flame in his heart was about to go out. That fire was burning low. And Paul says, Timothy, 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 it's time for you to quickly take action. And you have to be intentional about this. Anna, do what you did before. Do it again. Zal, put life back into per the fire. Put the poker into the coals. Begin to stir the coals. Do whatever you have to do to stir the fire up in your heart again. Stir up the gift of God that is in you. Well, today... I brought a piece of wood. Now, in the stand-up to today's program, I was in front of a big fire in my backyard simply to demonstrate the point of fire. If you want to have a big fire that burns for a long time, then you have to be faithful to put more fuel into the fire. If you don't pay attention to the fire, eventually the fire will go out. That's just the way that it works with fire. Denise and I learned this in the early days of our life in the former Soviet Union. That's where I live now. This is in Russia. This is Moscow. But at one time, we lived in another place in the former Soviet Union. And Denise and I decided that in our city, we were going to purchase an apartment. So we began looking for an apartment. And finally, we found an apartment, 
a very large apartment. It had 11 rooms and it was in a derelict building right downtown. The location was wonderful, but it was derelict. No one lived in the building except bums. Bums lived in the building. I remember the first time I walked into that apartment, I could see it by faith because the rooms were large. I could see the molding, which was over 100 years old, the fireplaces, which were still so beautiful. But generally, the condition of the whole apartment was hideous. There was graffiti written on the walls. There was mold on the walls. One room actually had a piece of plastic spread across the whole room because the roof of the apartment was falling in and the plastic was designed to catch the plaster as it fell. There was not a single window in the entire apartment that had window panes. It was just fresh air blowing in and out of that apartment. It was horrible. The floors were destroyed. No one in their right mind would buy anything in that condition. But when I walked into that, into that apartment, I could see by faith what it could look like. And because it was so devastated, it was the right price. Now I have to tell you, Denise was not in the country at the time. I bought it without Denise ever seeing it. And the first time Denise walked into that apartment and saw it, her mouth fell open. She said, you have got to be kidding me. This is what you have purchased for our family. But over time, it became marvelous. Now, maybe you've seen the movie, Dr. Zhivago. In the movie, Dr. Zhivago, which talks about the Russian Revolution, it portrays one scene where the apartment of a family in Moscow was seized by the government and it was turned into a communal apartment. Well, that's what happened to the big apartment that I was about to purchase. Eight families lived in one apartment. There was one toilet, one toilet, and there was no heat in the building. It was completely derelict. It was just dilapidated, horrible, but I could see it by faith. It was so dilapidated, so ruined, that there was a hole that went all the way through the floor next to the toilet where men had missed the toilet and the acid in the urine over years had eaten through the floors of the apartment. And standing next to the toilet, you could look down into the apartment below. That is how bad this apartment was. But we purchased it and we began to renovate this apartment to put it back in its original shape. I always thought about what Jesus does in our lives. He seeks to restore what the devil took away from us. Well, we restored that apartment. And by the time that we were finished, it was simply marvelous. But part of the restoration process was putting the pipes in the wall so we would have heat in the winter. Well, we were the first to be in that building. We were the only occupants in that entire building downtown. And the city said, if you'll put the pipes in the wall, by winter, we'll get heat to the building. Back in those days, no one had individual heating. It was all centralized. It came from the city. So we put the pipes in the wall and we did our part. We put in all the radiators, but the winter came and the city did not keep their word. So now Denise and I, Paul, Philip, and Joel were living in a fully restored apartment in a completely derelict building. In fact, when you walked into that building, it was so dark, it was so dingy, it was difficult to believe anybody really lived in it, but we did, we lived on the second floor and we were the only residents of the entire building and the city did not keep their word. So winter came and guess what? We had no heat. So there we were in this big apartment that we had refurnished. Now we're waiting for the heat to come. The heat doesn't come, the winter is setting in, but there was one good thing about that apartment. That apartment had six fireplaces, not fireplaces like you think of, but a very old world European kind of fireplace. And we had six of them, but we didn't have any fuel. And because we were downtown, it wasn't possible to bring fuel to burn in those fireplaces. So Denise and I one day were sitting in our house wearing coats. All of us were wearing coats because the winter had set in and we were freezing in our beautiful apartment. Can you imagine living in this part of the world with no heat and winter has set in? And Denise and I are sitting there trying to figure out what to do when suddenly Paul, Philip, and Joel said, we'll be back in just a few moments. 
We watched as all three of them went out the door of the apartment and they disappeared. And I said to Denise, where are they going? Well, they were gone a while. And soon they returned. And when they returned, they walked into our apartment carrying armloads of wood. I said, where did you get the wood? They said, well, since the apartment below us is so destroyed and the parquet can never be fixed, marvelous parquet, mahoganies, ebonies, all kinds of beautiful wood that was 100 years old, completely, completely destroyed. They said, since nobody will ever be able to refurbish that floor and nobody owns that apartment and whoever eventually buys it's going to have to rip the flooring up anyway, we just decided to go downstairs and get an armload of food, wood to put into our fire so we can have heat in our home. And Denise and I watched with our mouths open as our sons begin to take mahogany, ebony, all kinds of beautiful, exotic, 100-year-old wood, and they begin to feed it into the door of our fireplace. Wow! Then they lit it on fire, and guess what? All of a sudden, the fire began to burn, and that fire provided heat for our house. And that entire winter, we had heat because our sons ripped up all the parquet in the abandoned apartment below us, and we burned it in our fireplaces. We would literally hover around that big green ceramic fireplace. We were so thankful for the heat that it provided. But in order for the heat to keep burning, we had to continually feed it fuel. If we didn't keep putting wood into the fireplace, eventually the fire would go out. Well, today, I brought a piece of wood because I'm talking about fuel. If you are going to stay on fire, you can't depend on the same fire that you had years ago. That fire will eventually go out. In order for your fire to burn, to burn brightly, and to sustain your spiritual fire for years and years to come, you have to keep putting more fuel into the fire. You say, well, what kind of fuel do I need? That's what I'm going to talk to you about in these programs. I'm going to talk to you about various kinds of fuel you have to have to stay on fire and to be an inferno for the Lord for the rest of your life. But I want to read one more verse to you. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19, listen to this amazing verse where the Apostle Paul said, quench not the Spirit. He said, quench not the Spirit. The very fact that he said, quench not the Spirit, means the Spirit can be quenched. The fire of God in your heart, it really can be quenched. And in this verse, Paul says, don't do that. Quench not the Spirit. It's very strong in Greek. It's emphatic. Don't do this. Don't quench the Spirit. Well, what does that word quench mean? The word quench is a Greek word which means to extinguish. So you could translate it, do not extinguish the Spirit. It could be translated to smother. Do not smother the Spirit. To suppress, to douse, to put out, to snuff out, or to suppress. So you could translate it, don't extinguish the Spirit, smother the Spirit, suppress the Spirit, douse the Spirit, put out the Spirit, snuff out the Spirit, or suppress the work of the Spirit. It most often meant to extinguish a fire by dousing it with water, but in some places it means to evaporate or even to dry up. And that's what happens to a fire that you don't continually feed with new fuel. I don't know if you ever sat around a campfire. When I was a kid, I used to love to cook hot dogs and marshmallows with my friends in our youth group around a campfire. Campfires are so wonderful, but if you don't keep adding more fuel to the fire, that fire which raged, that fire which provided such warmth and was so beautiful to look at, if you don't put more fuel into the fire, eventually the fire begins to get lower and lower and lower until finally all there is left is coals, just charred remains. And if you don't stir up those remains, if you don't stir up the embers, eventually it will go out altogether. It will dry up. It will evaporate. It will be extinguished. But you know, it's an amazing thing. Even when all you have left is embers, if they're still burning a little, you can put new fuel on those embers. And if you stir up those embers, those embers will catch that new fuel on fire. And a fire, which was about to go out, 
can begin to burn brightly again. And that's what I'm talking to you about. If you feel that your fire has begun to go out, you can stir up the embers. You can put more fuel into the flame, just like we learned to do in our apartment back in the early days in the Soviet Union, when every day we had to go find wood, we had to physically carry it up the stairs, we had to open the door to the fireplace, we had to proactively put the fuel into the fire, stir the coal, stir the embers, and finally that new wood would catch on fire and it would provide warmth for our entire family. But for the fire to burn and burn and burn and burn and burn, we had to regularly stir the coals and we had to regularly put more fuel into the fire. And that's what you have to do if you're going to stay on fire now and for years to come. And don't lie to yourself. Don't say, well, you know, it's normal to be on fire earlier, but as life goes on, the fire begins to die down. Why? The Bible says God makes his ministers to be a flame of fire. It doesn't say in the early years. It just says a flame of fire. God wants you to be a flame of fire. He wants you to be an inferno for your entire spiritual life. What a way to exit the world on fire for God. That's the way you want to meet Jesus one of these days. Whether you die or whether you meet him in the rapture, you want to meet him on fire. And you can be if you'll identify your spiritual condition if you'll stir the coals, stir up the gift of God that is in you, and if you'll keep adding the right fuel to your flame, you can make certain that that flame keeps burning and that you stir up the gift of God that is in you. You can do that. And that's what I'm going to show you in this series. We're out of time. I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. Is the fire of the Holy Spirit burning in your heart as it burned earlier in your life? How do you stoke the embers of fire so that they begin to burn red hot in your heart again? How do you sustain that fire for the rest of your life? In the 10-part series, A Life Ablaze, Rick Renner will show you the fuels you need to stay spiritually ablaze and how to use them to stir your spiritual fire. In this 10-part series, you'll learn what is the real condition of your spiritual fire right now, what to do if your spiritual embers are about to go out, how to stoke the coals to get them burning again, what fuels you need to inject into your spiritual fire. Available in digital or physical format, starting at just $20, you'll learn how to reach inside yourself to stir up the fire of God that is in you. In addition to this teaching series, you can also purchase the book, A Life Ablaze. In this powerful book, Rick lays out everything you need to live an intimate, uncompromising life and stay on fire with the Holy Spirit's power for years to come. You can do it, but you need to know how, and that is what you'll discover in this timely book. Don't delay ordering your copy today, because it will help you throw the right fuels into your fire to get you burning again. Order your copy of A Life Ablaze today for only $18. Don't miss this special offer, this series A Life Ablaze, and the companion book A Life Ablaze. Call now, 1-800-742-5593, or go online wherever books are sold. Call or go online now. Good News Church is one of the largest Protestant churches in the former Soviet Union. Rick Renner received a revelation to open churches in the former Soviet Union. Following his call, he moved from America to Latvia in 1993, opening the first Good News Church in Riga. A few years later, in the year 2000, the Moscow Good News Church was opened in Moscow. And in 2007, the Kiev Good News Church was opened in Kiev. All the churches that were started by Pastor Rick continue to grow and develop. The Riga Good News Church today has 1,000 members. The Moscow Good News Church is attended by 2,000 members, but over 5,000 people from Moscow actually consider it their spiritual home. In the near future, Pastor Rick plans to keep opening new branches of the church in different parts of Moscow. For people in Kiev, the Kiev Good News Church has also become their spiritual home. Our ministry also ministers to people throughout our online Good News Church, which provides spiritual food to people, responds to their spiritual needs, and provides a marvelous opportunity to minister to people who do not have a local church to attend. 
We have more than 40,000 online church members from 56 countries every month. Over 300 volunteers minister to these precious souls. Each affiliate of the Good News Church is unique, but each has its own face. But we are all one body, and our principal task is to lead people to Christ and to get them established in the Word in a local church. We all have a part to play, and we ask you to join us in partnership so that we can continue to establish people in the Word of God in the local church. Please call 1-800-742-5593 or go online to renter.org. With your generous support, we can continue to make a huge difference in people's lives and around the world. It has been so good today to share the Word of God with you and to encourage you to stir up the fire of God that is inside your heart. You have to put more fuel into your flame if you want your flame to keep burning. Your spiritual fire needs fuel. You say, what kind of fuel? Well, that's what I tell you in my series called a Life Ablaze, 10 Simple Keys to Living on Fire for God. It's 10 parts, it comes in multiple formats, and it comes with a book that I really want you to have. It's 448 pages, A Life Ablaze, 10 Simple Keys to Living on Fire for God. You know, every book I write is my new favorite book. Well, right now, this is my favorite book. This book is so practical, and it is really different than any book I've ever written. It's so hands-on about how to put fuel into your spirit so that your spirit remains an inferno for Jesus for the rest of your life. And I really want you to get a copy of this book. And I always tell you that for those who become partners with our ministry, we always send you a couple books as our way of saying thank you for initiating that kingdom relationship with us as we begin to impact people around the planet with the teaching of the Bible. We're coming to a church in your area. We're coming to Madison, Alabama to Cornerstone Word of Life Church with Pastor Mark Garver. We're so excited to get there on January 18th and 19th. Colorado Springs, Church for All Nations. We love to go to that wonderful church, Pastor Mark Cowart, on February 2nd. Then we're coming to Newark, Texas, to Eagle Mountain International Church, where we'll be with our very dear friends, Pastors George and Terry Pearsons. That is February the 9th. Then Cedar Springs, Michigan, City Church, with Pastor Doug Bergsma, on February the 15th. And finally, we'll be in Granville, Michigan at Resurrection Life Church with Pastor Dwayne Vanderklok on February the 16th. If you can meet us in any of those meetings, Denise and I would be so glad to see you. Now, I advise you to go to our website to look for all updated information before you come, but we'll be waiting for you in one of those places if you can make it. But I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that today, you're encouraging us to stir up the gift of God that is in us. Lord, you didn't want us just to start on fire and then lose it. You want us to stay on fire, sustain that fire for all of our life. Teach us, Holy Spirit, how to provide the right fuels into our own hearts so we can remain an inferno for Jesus for the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with me today. Remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. I'll see you in the next program.